Hello, everyone. I'm Joseph Jaraputo, the founder and editorial director of Global Finance, speaking from New York. Joining me is Nick Smith, Global Head of Managed Services at SmartStream Technologies, coming to us today from Jacksonville, Florida. SmartStream is a leader in financial transaction management solutions. It provides a range of products for the transaction lifecycle with embedded artificial intelligence and machine learning. These can also be deployed in the cloud or as managed services. Recently, in its Innovators 2022 Awards, Global Finance Magazine recognized SmartStream as the most innovative fintech in Western Europe. Welcome, Nick. Congratulations on SmartStream's Innovation Award. Hey, Joseph, thank you very much. Um, it's a pleasure to be with you today. And I have to say that we're very excited and very proud of SmartStream for the award. Please tell us what's driving SmartStream's innovation. What we're really doing, Joseph, is we're listening to our customers. We're looking at the market. We look at where we think the industry is moving to. But above everything else, we listen to our customers. Um, we, we see um, some fintech companies and you know they've developed a product and then they're marketing it. Here at SmartStream, we have a very different philosophy. And we continue to evolve and develop our products. Um, every single one of our products um, receives a very high percentage of our total revenue every year into continuing to develop that product. Um, typically, we're investing around about 26% of our total revenue back into our products. Um, in 2022, that percentage has actually increased. Um, now, you may ask, well, what is that innovation? Where are we spending our, our research dollars? Um, what, what is the innovation that we're doing? Um, so SmartStream, we've been an industry leader in a number of the, the spaces that we operate for many years now. Um, but we also recognize that underlying technology is changing, it is evolving. Um, so every single one of our products is having their technology stack updated as we move away from legacy technology and we start moving towards both cloud native te technology and also um, cloud enabled technology. The key is changing that technology stack so that we're there for the, um, the future trends that we see coming. And I'll give you some examples. As, um, I, traditionally, um, financial technology uh, relies on um, heavyweight databases such as Oracle and SQL Server. Um, they're, they're fantastic products, they're great products, but they can be expensive to operate and they also come with limitations. Um, you know, a few years ago, we started seeing a move towards lower cost alternatives such as Postgres. Um, more recently, we've seen technologies such as Yugabytes coming through, uh, where it's based on Postgres, but it's a cloud native database. And now more recently, what SmartStream are focusing on is um, using um, technologies such as big data, where we can really leverage the power of um, some, some, some of these new um, products available to us. Um, do you know, also, the other thing that we look at is just the, the cost of operating products. Um, so historically, um, banks would have data centers and they go out and they buy servers and they would size those servers for the, for the maximum um, volumes or the peak volumes they would anticipate they would face. But the majority of the time, those servers were only using a small percentage of their, their existing power, their compute power. Um, and so in effect, you got a lot of spend and that actually being used there. So the other the other technology that uh, SmartStream have been bringing to our products is using serverless computing solutions, where in effect we only pay for what we use. We don't have a lot of redundant capacity sitting there, um, just in case volume spike. So we, we look at our solutions now, where we've been introducing um, technologies such as um, Fargate and Lambda, and that's re what's really helping drive um, some of the newer capabilities. But to be honest, you know, Joseph also increasing the power um, of our existing solutions. Um, you know, with as we move into um, the growth of digital payments, um, that's that's a in, that's a growing industry globally. But with digital payments, that grows um, the even more demand um, for for compute power. Well, again, moving to the cloud, making our solutions cloud native and cloud enabled bringing in solutions such as big data and Lambda enables to be able to meet that growing demand in the digital payment sector. And so a lot, a lot of effort going in, a lot of spend being invested into the, into the innovation space. As banks continue to focus on improving client experience across all their product lines, 
What technology shifts are you seeing? Honest, honestly, Joseph, everything related to the cloud. Um, if I said cloud, 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 I would still be understating it. Um, you know, the cloud provides instant scalability. Um, you know, I've looked at some banks where they've run into challenges where their existing infrastructure just just couldn't handle their existing volume, and then they were getting very nervous about their future volume growth. Um, and that's that's one of the limitations when uh, people are running their own services and their own data centers. Um, also, the, the other activity that we're looking at is um, security. Okay, right. the the drive towards increased security. You know, every day you can pick up a newspaper um, and see that another organization, another enterprise, has had a has had a um, an attack of some sort on their data. So we're also seeing um, more and more focus on security. It used to be five years ago, um, an information security team may send me a questionnaire about smart streams on security framework, and it may be 300 questions long. Today, it's unusual for us to have a questionnaire that comes through that's only 300 questions long. Today, they tend to be around about 1,000 questions long. Now, fortunately, you know, we've developed a very robust security framework here at SmartStream. Um, and we've never ever had any issues um, around that space, but it is a shift that we've seen in the industry over the last five years. And um, what we also see is that there are studies that are available, people can Google them and look, look them up online, um, but the studies suggest that the public cloud providers, and if you think about the three public cloud providers, AWS, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud, they can actually provide higher protection now than traditionally a bank could um, on their on-premise environment. And it's primarily because they're able to do it at scale uh, and the investment dollars that a big cloud provider can, can actually um, invest into that space. Whereas a bank with its on-premise environments and their own data centers have got much smaller teams and they've got much more dependency on individuals within their organizations. Um, uh, so the cloud, what it's really doing is it's removing the limitations and barriers that traditionally we've accepted when we've been operating our own data centers. Uh, and it's also enabling us to future-proof some of our own activities as we look to see where the industries are evolving. You, you've talked to the uh, rise in the, the adoption of cloud services. How about APIs? Has that also been increasing? APIs is a there's a growing demand. APIs have always been around you know, for a long time, um, but almost every single client that we engage with um, now wants to talk about APIs and how, how they're gonna be able to connect with our systems and basically maximize the, the value of the data that SmartStream may be hosting on their behalf. Um, they, they, what the industry is looking for is it's looking to lower its operating costs. It's looking to future-proof their own activities, uh, streamlining those information flows are key to doing that. Um, there, are, there are so many studies. Again, it's just easy to um, do a quick Google uh, and look at how people are mining data and maximizing the value of the data that they own. People are really starting to understand the true value uh, of, of data. Right? And the days when people would simply um, have data sitting in a database and only, and only use it and query it for their day-to-day -day business activities have, have moved on. And people are actually now analyzing the, the data in detail to understand you know, what trends are taking place or what additional services they may be able to offer a client or even identify where a client is maybe not as efficient or as effective as they could be right? and, offer, and offering um, clients opportunities to improve their own services. Right? And APIs provide a fundament, fundamental part of that because it is streamlining that connectivity right, and allowing institutions to be able to move forward. Um, five years ago, um, we saw a lot of institutions were hesitant to host data in the cloud. Today, I never hear that concern because um, the questions are always are, right, does, that, does the security meet the client's minimum expectations? But I no longer hear a client saying, well, I'm not too sure about putting my data into the cloud. It's gone away. But once it's in the cloud, what we need to make sure is that we've got that connectivity there. And APIs play, play a key part of that. Uh, this is very good, Nick. Thank you for your time.
Hey, Joseph, again, thank you for having us today. And Smash, I'm very, very excited about winning this award. Thank you.